Developing a backend is time consuming. Most of the time you will need to create basic CRUD operations, prepare role and permission systems, and prepare an admin dashboard to let the team manage the content. You also need to prepare some API documentation for the front-end team. But that was before the emergence of headless CMS. And today we will discover one of the most promising, Strapi. Out of the box, Strapi sweeps away all the tedious tasks by providing you with a complete and intuitive platform to create your data structure, to automatically generate a documented REST or GraphQL API, and views for administrator to fill in and update content. Before we dive into the platform overview, let's have a look at the different options to use Strapi. You can use the cloud version starting at $99 per month, or as it is an open source software, use the self-hosted version. Still, some features require an enterprise license. Together, we will use the free open source version through our platform Elestio for an easy setup. To create our instance of Strapi, go to LSIO, hit login, then deploy my first service, search for Strapi, hit select, then choose your cloud provider, I will choose Kailway, choose your region, choose the plan of your VM and hit next. Then choose your level of support and create service. I received the email telling me that my instance is ready. I can click on the link here to access it. It is the first time we open it, so we need to create our first administrator. Let's fill in our information. And we are connected and we arrive on the onboarding process. We can create our first content type or read the documentation or have a look at code examples. Let's read the documentation. We arrive on a quick start guide. We need to read it to know how to use it and know what we can do using Strapi. As with any other open source software we see together, I recommend you to have a look at the documentation to see what you are capable to do and to see if it's a serious project. Here it is. Let's create our first collection. Create your first content type. The display name will be properties and continue. We can choose between many types to create our collections. Let's start with a text. Let's name it title, it's a short text. I can select if it's short or long, and I have advanced settings like default value, a regex a validation pattern, define if it's required, the maximum length, if it's private, unique, but we don't need any of those, so finish. Add another field, add a text description, and this time a long text. Then we can add maybe the price of the property. We need a number, price, and then you have the number format. As it's a price, we will need to display cents, so decimal should be nice. Finish, add another field. Let's say we want to display the surface. It will be a number two, maybe a decimal two. Finish. Or maybe I should use add another field instead of finish every time. Oh, let's say we want to add images though it will be media, let's name it thumbnail. We have the choice between multiple images or single media, as it's the thumbnail here, we can use a single media and add another field. We can add a Boolean, is it sold or not? Advanced setting, the default value will be false, it's not sold by default. And okay, add another field. And we want to add the address of that property. We can add either create a new type that will be an address, but I don't need to store the address independently. I could use address one street city inside uh, multiple columns, but it's not very effective. Instead, we will use something called component. We need to add a category. Let's say it's address and an icon maybe this one and configure the component. You can see it's either a repeatable component, but us, we need one address per property. So here, single component, best for grouping fields like full address, main information. So it's exactly what we want to do and hit finish. So far, we have our properties type defined, the different fields that a property contain. Let's hit save. Now let's create a new collection type to define the type of property we have, like an apartment or a house. We can create a new collection type, name it property types, continue. It will only have a type and type, finish. And we hit save. Now let's leave the collection edition and go into a collection directly. Add a new property type, let's say apartment. 
let's add another one that we will say um, oh first we need to publish it it's uh, the same but you need to publish because by default it's a draft this is a great feature out of the box from Strapi is that you don't need to add a last update or a creator or a creation date. It's already inside every uh, collection entry that you create. Okay, let's go back to our property types, add a new one. We will say house, save, publish, and go back, add a new property type. Let's say mention, save, and publish. You got it. So you have all your property types. You can see uh, the ID, the type, but also when it was created, when it was updated, and the current state, if it's published or a draft. You can duplicate, edit, or delete it. You also have filters available, but this one is not very interesting. We will add more on the properties later. So let's start by, oh no, Let's not add yet properties. Now we have our property types. Let's look how we can add them to our properties. So add another field. We want to create a relation between a property. So it will be uh, its type and a property type. So we want one property to have one. So you have the re relation here, property type and finish. Don't forget to save. We can now go to properties and add our properties. So you can see it automatically create an edition view. Title, I asked ChatGPT, it gave me some names. So Siren Haven, a great property. The price, let's say it's 1 million. I don't know if I counted enough. Okay, 200 square meter. It's not sold and we can add a thumbnail. It's not just a file input, it's an asset manager. So you can add your files and reuse them uh, into other collections. Let's add this picture here. Upload one asset to the library, finish. And we have our thumbnail here. Address, I don't have the permission to see uh, this field because I made a mistake. I forgot to add uh, the properties inside an address. So hit save for the moment go to edit the fields and inside an address we need to say what it contains so address uh, we have a city maybe a zip code let's say it's a number i'm not sure it works everywhere and finish okay you should add more but we will stick to it okay let's go back to our properties this one and now inside address we can add our address so 32 streets of something, uh, Colorado. I put this, I have the property type here, which is the relation field. And we have the different types available. So this one, we'll say it's an apartment and save. As for the property types, we need to publish it. Go back to our properties and add another one. Let's call it Lux. Retreat, a great place. Let's put a price, a surface. Also add an image, upload and finish. We need to add the address. I can reuse it. The property type, this one, it's a house and hit publish. Now, if we go to our properties, we can add some filters. We can go to the price, is, is not, is lower. Well, you can add many filters. And if you go to property type, you can write uh, the value of the property type. So it's uh, apartment. And you find this one. It's looking into the value of the relation to apply the filter, which is powerful. Now we can remove it. Uh, we can also configure the view. By default, it selected the first columns of our collection, but we can go here, enable sold, uh, the thumbnail, and we can even reorder them and save it for the long term. So let's add a thumbnail, put it in first, save. Yes, confirm. We go back to our collections 
And now we have the thumbnail. They have this nice effect when you hover it, you see the image in bigger. Out of the box, you have this available to you and to your team. And from those data that you created without code, you're able to generate a REST API or a GraphQL API. Let's go to the marketplace. You can see that you have plugins enable so you have graphql uh, the documentation content type builder and some are already installed like the email let's add the documentation that automatically generate the swagger ui the api is already available but we need a ui to pass it to the team so download now our documentation plugin is installed we can see it on the left and go to documentation we have a GWT token if the access to the documentation is restricted or not and we can open the documentation. If you know Swagger you should be familiar with this interface. But you can see that we created properties ourselves and it automatically generated the endpoint for get, post uh, and other get method to get the count of properties we have to get one specific property and for example on get there are multiple parameters that you can use to do your requests. If we try it out of the box, so the URL is strappy this, and then we need to add properties. We will have a forbidden message because our API isn't public. If we want to make them public, we need to go into our settings to roles and into the public here. So it's the role that anyone has. You can add for each field what you are able to do. So for properties, we want people to be able to count them, to find them, but we don't want people to be able to create or delete property. Find one is okay and no update. Also same for property types, find one. Okay, now hit save and you can see on the right that it's saying bound root to and it's explaining you what root you are updating by giving access or not to it. Now, if we go back to our tab, we reload and we have a JSON with our data. It's not very readable. Let's see it in JSON lint. And now we have an array of objects. Maybe I can zoom a bit. We have the ID, the title, all the information that we set. And as we discussed earlier, we didn't create a published at, created at, and updated at, but it's by default on everything you do. You have the address, as it's a component, it's a nested object. Same applies for the image thumbnail. It gives a lot of information so you can use and optimize in the format. And if we look further, the documentation, they have some parameters here that we can use for our request. So we don't need our team to do it for us. We can say, I want the title, contains maybe Lux, because we have Lux Retreat. Your filters, oh, it's title here, okay. Now, if we look, we only have one value and it's a Lux Retreat, because we filtered our search. We updated our public role, but of course you can create your role and your user for your team. So anyone has the right access to the right data. If you need more features that Strapi isn't providing out of the box, you can go to webhooks and plug your backend and do additional logic to those data inside your own backend. And you can use their CLI to update data and do the process you need to. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know if there is any open source software you'd like us to cover or if you are searching for a specific software solution and can't find it. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. To continue your journey of open source software, I recommend you to watch this video here.